Chapter 1. Philosophies and Thoughts Stop thinking like a folk-style referee. Philosophies in freestyle and Greco are counterintuitive to folk style. Situations are not always black and white. They are open to interpretation. You are part of a referee team. Do your job and let others do their job. Points are opinions until they are confirmed by the referee team. It is not how you score the action, it's how the referee team scores the action. Expand your gray area and be flexible. The broader your gray area, the better referee you'll become. Be flexible and able to adjust to change. Don't be rigid. Need to be able to adjust during a tournament or during a bout. Understand the seven basic wrestling skills. Stance. Motion. Level change. Penetration. Lift. Backstep. Back arch. Understand the three pillars of evaluation. The wrestler must use a variety of holds to score. Wrestler must be active. Wrestler must take risks. Understand the skill level of wrestlers you are refereeing. Different skill levels, Bantam to Olympian, and location, local high school gym to world championship venue, can determine your mechanics. Each skill level requires an understanding of the wrestler's capabilities and referee skill set, as situations may get called a little different. Good referees understand this well. As you work higher level competitions, the tournament clinician will provide guidance for each tournament. It is imperative you follow their instruction or you may get disciplined, sat down. Your ability to manage the bout without involving yourself or affecting the outcome is an art. Plan, think, and anticipate. Keep learning. Never stop learning. It's what you learn after you know it all that counts. John Wooden. Be observant at tournaments. Watch and see how things are being called. Identify the referees that are good and watch them. Choose a mentor you can discuss calls and situations. Respect. If you want to be respected, you must be respectful. As a referee, you should be able to mediate conflict, not cause more of it. Opinions. If you have an opinion, make sure it is in, in accordance with the rules. You must respect the rules. Read the rule book. Know the rules. Do not make stuff up. Evaluating the action. As a referee, you must feel the action. When evaluating the action, your first thoughts are typically the best. As soon as the call comes to mind, call it. Go with your first instinct. If you wait, you'll begin to overanalyze and change your mind. Three things separate the best referees from the good referees. One, timing of passivity calls. Two, edge calls. And three, fleeing the hold calls. Chapter 2. Essential UWW Terminology Standing Position Wrestlers are in a vertical or upright position on their feet. Parterre Position Wrestlers are on their hands and knees, on the mat. Parterre is ground wrestling regardless if there is control or not. Risk the willingness of the wrestler to expose themselves to the possible loss of position or points during attempts to score. The concept of risk in wrestling should not be misinterpreted. It does not mean that the wrestler can execute a hold improperly and not lose points or the advantage of their position. Chapter 3 <coughs> Essential UWW Vocabulary Action Used to inform a wrestler to wrestle more aggressively and actively try to improve position or to attempt more scoring actions. Contact. Used to inform a wrestler to place his or her hands on the back of their opponent <coughs> in a parterre starting position or to assume a body-to-body -body contact in the standing position. This term is often used for wrestlers <coughs> who are failing to engage holds with their opponents. Open. Used to inform a wrestler that they are using their hands, arms, or head to block offensive activity 
from his or her opponent and must change tactics to allow their opponent to take hold. <coughs> Attention. Used to inform a wrestler of an illegal action or impending penalty, often tied to passivity or fleeing type actions, as well as potential leg fouls in Greco-Roman. Head up. Used to inform a wrestler to raise their head. To avoid using the head as a weapon and or blocking tool. Continue. Used if the wrestler is stopped due to confusion, a whistle on the adjacent mat, e.g., or if the wrestler should continue an action where a potential score is developing slowly. Zone. Used to inform a wrestler that they have entered the 1 meter outer perimeter of the mat area and that they are close to going into the protection area. Center. Used to inform a wrestler to attain position away from the out of bounds and closer to the starting area on the mat. Place. Used to inform the defensive wrestler in parterre that they are getting close to the protection area and should make an effort to stay in the wrestling area. No fingers. Used to inform the wrestlers to quit grabbing or interlocking fingers from any position on the mat. If twisting is involved, this is an illegal hold and should be penalized immediately. If a wrestler continues to grab fingers after a verbal open command has been given, the wrestler at fault will be penalized with a caution and his opponent will receive two points. Take hold. Used to inform a wrestler they are avoiding contact and must take hold of their opponent. Chapter 4. Pre-Bout Planning What are you thinking about before a bout? Are you thinking about wrestling or is something completely unrelated to wrestling? Don't just wing it and hope for the best. Pre-Bout Planning should be based on the level of competition you're refereeing. Your pre-Bout Planning should include points of emphasis to help focus on during the bout, such as personal weak areas, clinician directives, wrestlers tendencies etc chapter 5 referee mechanics during each bout there are two things occurring the match occurring between the two wrestlers the referee team working together to make the right call at the right time when starting restarting the action ensure you can see between the wrestlers At the start of each period, ensure the judge and chairman are ready before blowing the whistle starting the action. Watch for a headbutt, eye gouge, punch, etc. Do not start restart the bout from the zone or protection area. Do not start restart the bout looking into a wrestler's backside. Move in close so the wrestlers can feel your presence, but not so close you block the view of the judge or chairman. Break the mat into quadrants. Clock positions. You should try to referee within the 1 to 5 and 7 to 11 quadrants. When the action begins, move to a position where you can best evaluate the scoring situation. Be in a situation so both wrestlers can hear your commands. The most important thing when you are the referee, position, position, Position. Referee outside looking in. Do not stand in the middle of the mat and watch the action move away from you. Move to the outside and pull the action towards you. Do not get so close that you get kicked or hit by the wrestlers. Stay back so you can see the entire action sequence. Form a triangle with the judge and chairman. Be aware of your position in relation to judge, chairman, wrestlers, and clock. Try to not block their view of the action. Work for a position that keeps the wrestlers between you and the judge. You and the judge are a team and must work together. As a referee, you should feel like you're pulling the action towards you, not pushing the action away. 
anticipate the direction of the action. Work the short side of the mat. When the action moves away from you, walk briskly, cutting off the mat through the central wrestling area to get into position. Never run. You do not need circumnavigate the central wrestling area. This takes time and could cause you to be out of position and miss the final stages of a scoring action. Level change. As the action changes levels, so should you in order to be in the best position to observe, evaluate the action. This is especially true in Greco when a lift throw begins. Move into good position and lower your level to watch for leg fouls. Lowering your level will give you a good view of how the action lands on the mat. See chokes, illegal holds, and observe a fall. If the action quickly changes direction away from you and you are unable to get into the best position, don't chase the action. Lower your level. Hold the whistle in your hand, not in your mouth. This helps prevent an inadvertent whistle, especially at the edge of the mat. It also allows you to verbally communicate with the wrestlers. Verbal communication. Must be vocal. When talking to the wrestler, use proper UWW vocabulary and are very clear and strong. Two reasons for verbal communication. Talking to the wrestlers for activity. Talking through the wrestlers to the referee team, setting up a call. The difference between commanding and nagging the wrestlers. Commanding. Spread out your commands, giving the wrestlers time to react. They will listen and react to what you want. Nagging. Non-stop chatter does not give the wrestlers time to adjust. When you nag, the wrestlers will stop listening to you. Visual communication. Must be animated when talking to the wrestlers or blowing the whistle. Use your hands to signal. Signaling with your hands visually lets everyone know who you are addressing or why you blew the whistle stopping the action. Not everyone can hear what you are saying or may not understand why you stopped the action. Visual communication breaks that barrier and keeps everyone informed. Eye scan pattern. As a referee, you must watch, evaluate numerous things during a bout. The wrestlers, the clock, score, judge, chairman. It is important to monitor each without overlooking the others or losing overall focus. Develop an eye scan pattern while on the mat. Similar to how we scan the road when we drive a car. Position A, watching the road and evaluating the conditions. Watching the wrestlers and evaluating action. Position B, monitoring the rear view mirror. Monitoring the clock score. Position C, scanning the driver and passenger mirror. Scanning the judge and chairman. Developing a scan pattern will also help you maintain proper position on the mat. Enable you to non-verbally communicate with the judge and chairman when setting up a call and insist when looking for confirmation. Making the call. Be decisive, confident, and sell your call. Hold your points high so everyone can see what you scored. Make your call and continue with the action bout. If the team confirms a different call goes around you, don't show emotion or displeasure. Continue with the bout. Remember, it's not how you score the action. That's your opinion. It's how the referee team scores the action. Maintaining control of the mat. As a referee, you must ensure discipline is maintained. You set the tone for what will and will not be accepted. Do not let the wrestlers or coaches dictate discipline to you. There is a difference between aggressive wrestling and brutality. Unnecessary roughness. Things can and will escalate quickly unless you maintain control. Maintaining control of the corners. Use proper protocol and be respectful when dealing with coaches. Coaches are emotionally invested in their wrestlers. Referees are not. 
coaches are trying to help their are going to talk, yell, cheer, etc. Don't overreact to everything a coach says or does. Coaches are trying to help their wrestler. It's not personal. Be aware of who is in the corner. From the novice dad coach to the national team coach, each coach is different. Some sit quietly in the corner and some become very vocal and animated. You must be mentally prepared to deal with the corner. Typically, a big bot will have high-level coaches in the corner. If a coach begins to direct his or her focus on you, vice the wrestlers, stop the bout at an appropriate time. Respectfully give them an attention and ask them to stop. If they continue, you can give them a yellow card. If you must give a yellow card, be professional and non-emotional. You do not want to give the appearance you're trying to show up or embarrass a coach. Put your card out of your pocket. Show it to the coach. Place it back in your pocket and continue with the bout. Professionalism is absolutely critical in this very emotional situation. If they still continue, a red card may be appropriate. <clears throat> Chapter 6, Time Management. The clock is the fourth member of the referee team. In order to effectively manage a bout, you must team up with the clock and manage time. If you don't manage the clock, the clock will manage you. The clock is involved in every part of the bout and becomes important during time-critical phases of the bout when keen decision-making skills are required. The clock provides the requisite information, time, score, cautions, and period necessary to make time-critical decisions for effective bout management. Without the clock's constant feedback, our ability to properly manage the bout would be increasingly difficult to accomplish. The clock becomes more important if the wrestlers are not scoring points and you are required to use passivity to determine the bout. Must be aware of the wrestler who has scored points from actions, total bout concept, and work with the clock to avoid letting negative wrestling, passivity, and fleeing the hold determine the outcome of a bout. This is especially true if one wrestler has scored points. Timing of your calls is equally important as evaluating the action. If you make calls too early, you'll have too much time remaining. If you make calls too late, you'll run out of time and options. Space your passivity warnings throughout the period in order to allow wrestler to adjust. You should not call passivity and then immediately make another passivity call. Timing is critical. If you're going to make an end of the bout call that will change the winner, you must know how much time is remaining. I didn't know how much time was left is inexcusable for making a poorly timed call that costs a wrestler a victory. Time management is critical skill that takes effort and practice. Evaluating the action. Offensive tactics that leads to technical moves or scores. An offensive wrestler will utilize one or multiple offensive tactics in order to execute a technical move and score. Getting pressure back from opponent. Bending and raising the torso. Getting an angle. Motion towards a landing spot. Imposing feet position. Feints. There is a difference between attack, counterattack, oh, counteraction, and counterattack. As you evaluate attacks versus counteractions versus counterattacks, six questions. To ask yourself when evaluating the action. Who took the risk? Initiated the action. Did the offensive wrestler's attack stall while in danger? If so, could the result if so 
could be the result of a counteraction. Did the momentum of the attack carry the offensive wrestler to his or her back? Did the action change direction? If so, could be the result of a counterattack. Did the offensive wrestler maintain the lock throughout the action? If so, reward the attacking wrestler. How did the action finish? Who ended up in danger or on top when the action finished? When in doubt, reward the attacking wrestler. Attack to take the initiative and conduct an offensive action in trying to score. Example 1. Red attacks with a standing double leg, taking blue directly into danger. Red scores points for the attack into danger. Blue does not score. Example 2. Red attacks with the standing double leg, taking blue directly into danger. The momentum from attack causes red to get carried over the top, exposing his back. Red maintained the lock throughout the action and comes back up, up on top. Red scores the points for the attack into danger. Blue does not score as red's back exposure was due to the momentum of the attack and red maintained the lock. Evaluation note. Watch the offensive wrestler's lock and momentum of the action. Counteraction. An action intended to stop an offensive move and hold the offensive wrestler in a position of danger. Example, red attacks with a bear hug and attempts to back arch, throw, blue. As they go to the mat, blue spreads his arms, stops the offensive move, and traps red on his back. Blue is able to hold red in danger for a short period of time. Blue scores points for the counteraction. Red does not score. Evaluation note. Watch the defensive wrestler's response to the offensive action. The counteraction must stop the offensive action in danger. Counterattack. An attack in response to an attack. Example 1. Red attacks with a standing double leg. Blue is able to change the direction of the attack by hipping red into danger. Blue scores points for the counterattack into danger. Red does not score. Evaluation note. Watch the offensive wrestler's direction of attack. Example 2. Red attacks with a standing double leg and takes blue directly into danger. While on his or her back... Blue is able to kick Red over into danger with his own initiated action, not momentum. During the kickover, Red loses the lock. Red scores points for the attack into danger. Blue scores points for the counterattack. Two point versus four point versus five point actions. As you evaluate offensive actions, Three questions to ask yourself which can help you quickly analyze and determine the point values. Two, four, or five points for each action. One, did the action start in standing or in parterre? Two, did the defensive wrestler go to danger? Three, was the action considered grand amplitude? Award points for all actions in a series. Award points as you see them, not just the final action like in folk style. When scoring multiple actions, show only one color at a time. In the order the points are scored. Do not hold up both hands at the same time showing red and blue points. Example, red scored four points, then blue scored one point. You should first show red four points. Lower your left arm and then show blue one point. Three points of contact in relation to a takedown. Criteria. To the wrestler who overcomes and then controls his opponent by passing behind the hips with three points of contact, instantaneously make contact on the mat, head, arms, 
hands, elbows, and knees. Two arms and one knee. Two knees and one arm or head. Quad pod. A quad pod is not a freestyle takedown. It is a folk style takedown. A quad pod does not meet freestyle takedown criteria until three points of contact touch the mat or the defending wrestler is turned thrown. Merkel. A Merkel is not a freestyle takedown. It is a folk style takedown. The Merkel does not meet freestyle takedown criteria until the offensive wrestler's leg comes out and offensive wrestler goes behind the defending wrestler's hips. Front headlock. Watch for the choke. Lower your level and look from the bottom up. Focus on the throat. Airway artery. If you see a key lock, a wrestler is going for the choke. If a wrestler is just hanging on to the headlock and not trying to improve, approximately three to four seconds, give a couple of action commands. If no improvement, quickly stop the action. It only takes a few seconds for a wrestler to be choked unconscious. Attacking with a front headlock. Evaluation note. When evaluating a front headlock, watch the offensive wrestler's lock. If the offensive wrestler maintains a lock throughout the action sequence, only the offensive wrestler should score points. If the offensive wrestler loses the lock during the action and is counterattacked, both the offensive and defensive wrestler can score points. There is a difference between standing up and getting lifted. Standing up. If the offensive wrestler secures a takedown and the defensive wrestler, under his or her own power, stands up, establishes a standing position, and attempts to escape or turn to face the offensive wrestler, and the offensive wrestler returns the defensive wrestler back to the mat, this could be another takedown. If the defensive wrestler gets to their feet, yet their hands are still on the mat, quad pod position, or close to the mat, hold your call until the action has completed. In this situation, if they go back to the mat, no points. The call is situationally dependent and is counterintuitive to folk style. Getting lifted. If the offensive wrestler secures a takedown and lifts the defensive wrestler, unable to score, and then returns the defensive wrestler back to the mat, no points. Throws. When a throw begins, move into good position, lower your level, so your eyes are even with the legs, and you can see the landing. Evaluation note, just lowering your level does not always equate to good position. Watch the beginning and, most importantly, the landing. A throw may start out looking big. Don't get caught up watching the middle of a big throw and lulled into making a grand amp into danger call. There are times when a big throw doesn't land in danger, making it a basic throw takedown. Attacker's knees can be on the mat. Fireman's carry. On the edge, watch the offensive wrestler's hips to evaluate a good throw or step out. Step out. The hips will turn after stepping out of bounds. Good throw. The hips will turn before stepping out of bounds. Grand amplitude throw. Feet, hips, go up and over the head. Does not go side to side except for a reverse body lock. Three grand amp evaluation factors. A lift. An arc through space lands in danger. Philosophy. The requirement for how spectacular a throw depends on weight. 
Lighter wrestlers have big throw. Heavy wrestlers have lower throws. Keep in mind how big the wrestlers are. The bigger the wrestler, the more effort and risk it takes to lift and throw. Risk, correct hold. Correct hold is scored. A hold throw that takes one wrestler off his or her feet and moves them 180 degrees but does not score. However, the defensive wrestler loses control and lands on their hip, side, or stomach when they hit the mat as a result of the action. Reward the technique and risk taken by the offensive wrestler. Correct hold is not scored. A throw that takes one wrestler off his or her feet moves them 180 degrees and does not score. However, the defensive wrestler maintains control when they hit the mat. Reward the defensive technique and counteraction taken by the defensive wrestler. Evaluate the scoring options on a correct hold. No control. Red executes a correct hold, does not gain control, and blue loses control. Correct hold points for red. Reversal. Red executes a correct hold. However, blue counterattacks and scores a reversal. Correct hold points for red. Reversal points for blue. Control. Red executes a correct hold and gains control and secures the takedown. Takedown points for red. Risk. Slip throw. Action that results in the offensive wrestling going directly into parterre without any action by the defensive wrestler is a slip throw. The defensive wrestler does not score any points. Philosophy. Reward the offensive wrestler for taking risks by not giving the defending wrestler unearned points. Must determine if the action was a legitimate attempt. If there is a slip throw, do not stop the bout. Get confirmation from the judge or chairman. A desperation swing and miss is not a slip. Typically, this occurs on the edge. A wrestler cannot be going backwards for a slip throw. This is typically a bailout by the defensive wrestler. Evaluation note. Throws do not start from the heels. They begin from the toes. If the defending wrestler catches the offensive wrestler in a counterattack and takes them to the mat, then it is not a slip. It is a takedown for the defending wrestler. Evaluation note. A slip throw that results in the offensive wrestler landing flat on their own back is not a slip throw. Evaluation note. A wrestler can be rewarded a slip throw going into the protection area. However, they will lose points for the step out into the protection area. Misidentified action as a slip throw. The following attack is often misidentified as a slip throw. In figure 65, both wrestlers are fighting for position. Figure 66, red begins an attack, headlock. Figure 67, Red passes by Blue's head and attacks, traps Blue's right arm. Figure 68, Red successfully throws Blue into danger. When evaluating this action, watch the follow through trapping the arm. The throw into danger is typically very quick, which causes a slip throw misidentification. Don't get caught only watching the arm passing by the head and call a slip throw. Let the situation develop. Take down to turn versus throw. The difference between a take down to turn and throw. A take down to turn has two separate actions and a throw has one action. The action sequence below is used to illustrate possibilities. Take down to turn. In figure 69, blue begins the attack. In figure 70, Blue has placed red on the mat. Takedown criteria has been met. In figure 72, blue immediately turns red, placing him in danger.
throw. In figure 69, blue begins the attack. Figure 71, blue has placed red in a quad pod position. Takedown criteria has not been met. In figure 72, from the quad pod position, blue throws red, placing him in danger.